and you may have to drop the powder down when it's really benign out, uh, where benign winds. But you've got to be open and resourceful that when things are not working, you have to read how your group forms in the bullet holes. When things are not working, you have to read how your group forms in the bullet holes. And there is a science to looking at the bullet hole and the target. It will tell you what you may need to do. Sometimes a bullet hole looks elliptical, like uh, half of a, a moon where it's thick on two thirds of the bullet hole. Sometimes it'll look like a torque screwdriver uh, with a tiny little 17 or 22 caliber hole because the bullet's overstabilized. It's, it's going too fast. And interpreting how that bullet hole cuts in the paper, ideally we want a round, perfectly round black carbon ring around that bullet hole. We don't want to see a teardrop hole, a torque screwdriver type tiny hole, or something that is elliptical with a, a bullet that's got yaw to it that's going through the paper. Uh, and there is a science of looking at it. And then obviously, whether you've got vertical in your group or a flat weather report, uh, whether the gun's spitting a shot or double grouping, uh, in short range, that'll tell us, especially at 200 yards, um, you can diagnose pretty quickly what your rifle is wanting and uh, you just got to figure it out. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, Everything you just said about groups and reading groups, oh, man, I gotta, I gotta take a minute to take all that in. So, all right, you touched on something that I literally about a week ago I covered on my Patreon uh, for my Patreon supporters, mm -hmm. which is uh, a flat weather report. Mm -hmm. I showed them two groups, and I shot these at a thousand and fifty yards because you know I do long mm -hmm. range, right? Right. And I had one group that was 4.3 inches total, mm -hmm. 4.3 inches. Mm -hmm. I had three and a half inches of vertical mm -hmm. and overall it was 4.3 4 inches, but three, three point, I think it was 3.5 inches vertical, mm -hmm. 1,050 yards. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I showed them another group that had like, I'm going to say an inch of vertical, mm -hmm. but it was 11 inches wide. Yep. And I said, okay, which one? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people said, well, the flat one, obviously. No, it's, yeah. Look, and, the uh, only thing that's important, ugly small groups win. I don't care how pretty <laughs> that flat weather report looks. So many people, and uh, literally you, every week, uh, people will text me pictures of their group. What do you think? And, you know, a lot of the groups might be flat in the wind. And I'll say, well, your load's way too light. Well, that's just me missing the condition the pickup. Yeah, you're right. You missed the condition, but your tune did not help you where the load was just not fighting the left of the pickup of the wind. Here's the breakdown, Eric, that I try to counsel or teach people when I do a class. There's, I think, seven different group formations at 200 yards that will tell me when I'm shooting what I need to do. Uh, if you give me a little attitude here, uh, I'll explain them to you. Um, if I'm shooting vertical, um, I never really want to accept vertical as part of my group size where it's touching two rings unless conditions are extreme with maybe a headwind, tailwind to where you can't really prevent some of that. A lot of that can be tuned out with head and tailwind. As a general rule, I don't like to see my group touch two rings at 100 or 200 yards. Um, if I have that vertical, it's telling me my load is too light. Okay, I bump up in powder, maybe three tenths. It all depends where I'm at, but I go up in powder. Now my group starts shooting flat. I get the proverbial weather report. Now the load's a little bit hotter, the gun shooting flat, but the two worst groups really that you can shoot today is a flat group and one that has diagonal to it. They measure the biggest. So that I wanna stay away from, all right? So if I go up in powder beyond the weather report, now I get to the holy grail where the group starts cutting the wind left and right, and the group is a round circle, which is what we want. You get a little bit of vertical to it, and it's cutting that wind. Okay. Now, if I continue to go a little hotter, now I start seeing four in one, where I spit a shot. Now, this can be caused by maybe seating depth being off a couple thousands, 
But a lot of times this is the first red flag to say, hey, the load's a little bit too hot to where it's going to spit a shot. If I start seeing groups, particularly at 200 yards, where it's three and two, double grouping, that's my second red flag saying, hey, idiot, okay, I'm about to come apart. The load is just coming apart. And then, you know, which is the ag killer, is where I get the splatter, where I've got five bullets that are tiny. The bullet holes are small, not big, but they're tiny, and everyone is going in their own direction. That's just way too hot. So based upon one of those groups at 200 yards, that's how I kind of diagnose what I need to do with the load. And it, you can take it to the bank. And in short-range bench rest, that's it's a pretty good uh, indicator of what needs to be done. Um, again, some of that can be mitigated with moving that bullet a couple, two or three thousandths if you're losing a shot. But a lot of times, you know, based on vertical or weather report, you just need more powder. Wow. Well, so I'm literally speechless. I'm trying to process this. All of that made sense. That's 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 the, the beauty about this. You talked about seating depth uh, because, you know, we preload everything, mm -hmm. right? So we have no choice but seating depth or tuner, right? And obviously mm -hmm. the tuner is the easiest. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why there's so many tuners in FLS. Mm -hmm. uh, but seating depth is, before tuner, seating depth was the go-to uh, solution, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I've told people that three thousandths of, of an inch makes a world of difference. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't believe it. They say, you know, it's, it's, they won't do Two anything. Thousands. Two right. thousands or a thousands. Yeah. It's, it's it can that make close. Difference. So this is back to, uh, to uh, seating depth. And I, I understand you guys are shooting totally different setups, but typically how wide is a node? How, how wide, for example, if you have a, a seating depth and you say, I know mm -hmm. for a fact I can move in or out X amount and nothing's going to happen. How, how, how wide are nodes typically? Okay, great question. And here's the pucker factor. Anytime I put a new barrel on, um, what I'm going to try to do before I put that or after I put that barrel on, if I've got time, which a lot of times I don't, I'm going to fire form that case, one case, a couple times, break it in the barrel. If I have the time, I'll take the barrel back off the gun and I will take one of the fire form cases that's been shot a couple times and I'll make up a dummy cartridge with that case that's been shot in that chamber. I will seat the bullet long and what I'll do is hold the barrel vertically and I will take that dummy case and put that dummy round into that chamber. And then with my fingers, I will try to pull that dummy round out of that chamber. And with that, I'm gonna see if there's some stick to that bullet. And it's gonna be in the land, so I'll be able to feel very clearly that that bullet's stuck in the lands. I'm gonna keep moving my seating depth back about 2,000 at a time. And this takes a little bit of time, but all of a sudden, you're gonna have grab, grab, grab from all these seating depths. And then all of a sudden, that dummy cartridge, that bullet is just going to sit there without any resistance or scratch. If I move the bullet out one thousandths, it'll start to grab in the lands. That is what I deem my stick point. Mm -hmm. And I will record that down uh, in a notebook, how many rounds I may have that on that barrel. And then from that stick point, I generally will work back one thousandths, three thousandths, five thousandths, seven thousandths, nine thousandths. And I will shoot two shot groups at 100 yards. Here's the pucker factor. As I'm shooting two shot groups in a consistent wind, I'll shoot two quick shots. The wind doesn't have to be perfect because I want to test the quality of the barrel and bullet combination. But I will start seeing on my targets these nodes where it'll dot up in maybe one bullet hole and then it'll come apart or it'll elongate. And the better the barrel, every two thousandths, I can look at that barrel quality and know how much node 
that window, that tuning window has. A lot of barrels, every six thousandths, you'll find a tuning node. But I will, I, you know, <laughs> Wayne Campbell, who's on our team bit of Ori, Wayne went to the uh, IBS Nationals a few years ago, and a friend of mine was over at his house. Wayne's got his own range. He called me up and he said, Neary, we're in trouble. I said, why? He said, uh, Wayne put on a barrel, new Bart line, and he shot two shots with four different seating depths, two thousands apart, and they were all single bullet holes. Wow. And Wayne went out to win the two, three, and four gun. And it's like, oh, Andy, geez. The reason I got excited about that is because I've been telling people for years that at least in my experience, uh, seating depth nodes are about six thousandths wide mm -hmm. on average for what I've mm -hmm. seen. So I absolutely tell them you do not want to do 5,000 increments and you absolutely don't want to do 10,000 increments because mm -hmm. you'll never hit it. You just keep skipping over and skipping over, skipping over uh, right. and you'll never find it. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you might just land where mm -hmm. it shoots well. I said, but you might land on the ragged edge of that note and now you're just looking for trouble. So, so you need to comb the seating depth node to be able to mm -hmm. find not only the node, but the bounce, where it starts, where it ends, right. and then you stay uh, in there. Now, it, it's always pure joy when you start seeing good seating nodes, two thousands apart where they're trying to double up. Right. Uh, and it's bad when you don't, don't see consistency where maybe it's below, beyond six thousands or just one every nine thousands. Um, that lets you know that, you know, you're going to have to stay on top of the load and it's going to be hard to get really that barrel to perform, you know, to its peak potential. What but about that really is a great acid test. To what the about, and you've seen this, what about that zero group surrounded by two blobs that okay. a lot of people fall for that. They, they just, um, they just. <laughs> yep. Great question. Um, the same guy that I shoot with when he was a new shooter, we went to a match uh, at Fair Chance, Pennsylvania, and he didn't want to change his load through the day. So I said, all right, when you're done with this aggregate this morning, bring me your targets after at lunchtime and let's lay them out on the table. If you're going to shoot that same load of powder, which was Vitavori was shooting, I think, 29, one or two, we'll lay them out. And the first group in the morning was really good. He had a, a one, I don't know, maybe a mid one. But in the second, third, fourth, and fifth group, where he didn't change the load, you could see how the group started getting vertical and it started getting horizontal as that morning went on and it got a little warmer. Because powder burns by weight, not by volume. And he was just dropping it with a Harold's or a Neil Jones powder measure. And I told him, I said, what are your, what is this showing you? He's like, oh my gosh, this is, this is really a great learning test. It, my groups went to hell and because I didn't change the load. I said, okay, now your powder was two to three tenths heavier in that morning. Okay. And real quickly throughout that morning, as it warms up, that moisture is coming off the weight of that powder. So your powder is getting lighter and you're throwing by volume, not by weight with a Harold's or Neil Jones. So look at how your powder is getting lighter and look at how it affected your groups. If you would have been going up with more clicks on your Neil Jones Harold's measure to mitigate or maintain that powder weight, your group sizes would have maintained being real small. You would have had a great ag if you would have kept up with the powder. And a lot of people, I've done this numerous times that if you have someone that refuses to go up and load, and I know you guys are preloaded, Eric, um, you know, for your F class, but in us, you know, we're loading on the fly because of change in wind and conditions. Right. Um, but it, it, you can see very clearly, you know, how the gun comes into tune and then goes out of it. Or conversely, if you were too hot in the morning and you don't change the load, the load's getting lighter, the gun comes into tune. But um, the other thing to, as a, a segment to your question, um, if you also look at trending, look at how your groups are forming or your size of your groups. A lot of people don't pay attention to this until I point it out. Tonight I'm feeling me, gonna make an ugly scene. 
I am feeling 